Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the NS9 post game show, the hodgepodge of nothingness on Pittsburgh Baseball Now. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we got Jim Rosati. Jim, we got a dub. The Pirates have defeated the Chicago Cubs six to nothing today. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, excellent ball game, really all around. Good pitching, timely hitting. Yeah, all around fun game to watch. It really was. I mean, this was an actual good ball game through and through from the first pitch to the very last. It was entertaining. It was actual quality. Like you said, the offense was there. The starting pitching, holy hell, we'll talk about. But even the bullpen, a.k.a. Zach Thompson. Right. And as Connor says, Jim showed up. That might be the biggest win today. That's a big win. I Well, because I was at the Louisville football game. Didn't get home until eh, four o'clock or so. And then I didn't realize the game started at 630 instead of seven. And Fair I enough. took like a three hour nap. So that's, I missed that's like called sleep, I'm, not a nap. <laughs> I missed like the first four innings. <laughs> but I woke up in time to uh, to see all the runs. Woke up to see Oviedo finish it out. Yeah, it was it's a good, good day. It was a good day. So let's get to the talking of this because <sighs> Luis Oviedo took the start. Or Johan Luis. Johan Oviedo. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for Luis Ortiz as well. Johan Oviedo right. took the start today. We've we've had our mixed feelings on him. Definitely talented, right? He's, he, he's got some filth in this to him. But is he a starter? Is he a reliever? Seems like he'll probably end up being a reliever. But... My side was to, like, why not just throw him out there and see what he can do, what he had to lose. And to be honest, these past two starts have been really good. Today, today very strong. Let me ask you this, okay? Johan Oviedo, clearly his best start. So he goes seven innings today, three hits, no walks, seven strikeouts. Could you argue this is the best start of the Pirates all season long? Like, even talk about Mitch Keller's. I think you could definitely make that argument. Um, I mean, the Cubs, again, aren't a very formidable opponent. But, of course, from like a results standpoint, yeah. I mean, Oviedo was on tonight. Three runs, all I mean, three hits, all singles. So no extra base hits, no walks. The strikeouts were there. It was, it was uh, yeah, definitely one of the better outings a Pirates starter has had this year. Now, granted, the bar's quite low, but it, it, it's kind of my thoughts. You know, I mean, this is, you could argue it. I mean, we'd have to go back and really debate. No one wants to, no one cares enough. But I think just right now, off the top of the head, you, you could probably argue this is one of the better starts in uh, for the Pirates starter all year. So, but yeah, he just, he just dominated. Now, like you said, granted, it is yeah. the Cubs lineup. It's, it's not the best lineup in the world. However, you and I just talked about this, you know, before the show. I mean, at least, Compared to last night, today had some major leaguers in it. You had Patrick Wisdom, you had Hap, Gomes, Bodie, Morel. Like they're not the best major leaguers, but at least they're major leaguers. Well, last night was pretty much Iowa Cubs. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely a better lineup today that he was facing uh, than last night. Said so no, nothing too crazy, but no. Nah, and overall, I mean, he just looked great, and he was on today. He was throwing strikes. The command was way better than anything that we had ever seen up to this point with uh, with him. Uh, it, it is a little – like, I want to see more of him, right? Like, I'm not ready to write him off as a starter. I think you do have to kind of have that caveat in there where he's looked really good two starts, the Reds and the Cubs. He's looked really bad in his two starts against the Mets. And he looked not <laughs> that great against the Blue Jays, right? So – 
like when he's faced poor opponents, though, like he has dominated. So, uh, like I said, not not ready to write him off. He's only twenty three or twenty four years old right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to say he's a reliever. I'm not ready to say he's a starter either. Um, but I I want to see more of him. I think that's a, the fairest assessment. And also to kind of put out there, like you said, the bad teams look good. The the good teams he didn't look so good. But also with that said, and, and granted, like it's not his fault the timing of the opponents. But he faced the harder teams when he first came into the rotation not fully stretched out and such. He's been working. You keep hearing it. Like they're working on him throwing more strikes and the last out and he threw more tonight. He certainly did. 71% of his pitches were thrown for strikes. I mean, he was attacking the zone. He was looking, he was very efficient, very effective as Buck and Mike also points out here too. 82 pitches to go through seven. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he was really actually stretched out as a starter this whole time, he could have probably went the distance tonight. Yet, right. I mean, think about that. So, it only took 82 pitches to go through seven, um, but he looked very, very effective. I was very impressed, taken away from this again, understanding that's the Cubs lineup. We're at the end of the season. Everything we've talked about, you know, I haven't seen enough of him, but it's like I'm giving him every opportunity heading into 2023 to secure and lock down a rotation spot. Again, there's nothing that's outstanding this rotation. Like Mitch Keller's going to get one. Romans is going to get one. And then you hope others, you know, can slide in and such. Them are locks. I mean, I want to battle for the last three. I think it's fair enough that Oviedo should uh, be afforded that opportunity. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, like, going into next year, you have to think, yeah, Contreras, Keller, locks. Probably Brubaker. Brubaker, probably, Brubaker, probably but... a lock. But, you know, you don't – I don't think you write him in pen. Like, you put him in pencil, right? Yep. Um, and then you let Ortiz, you let Oviedo, and you know you bring in a veteran to I think is is the play. Um, yeah, so you let those guys battle it out for those last two spots um, and, and see what happens. And then you got to hope that Priester Burrows also become available at some point and or are there for for depth you know if you need them early on in the year but right yeah i uh, i i said i exactly what my, what but what bucko mike here says so yeah ortiz oviedo brubaker free agent let those four battle for three spots i actually wouldn't be opposed to bringing in two free agents just like for a little bit more comfort but i would be okay with one i guess that's fair so again, Oviedo four and two on the season now. His ERA is down to a three point one three. Looked fantastic today. Um, and then I guess the, this might be the bigger story again. I mean, Oviedo looked fantastic, but I think the bigger story is the bullpen had two innings to to not allow six runs, and they did that successfully. They even held down the zero runs. Zach Thompson came into the game, two innings. Now, of course, he did give a hit and a walk. He looked Zach Thompson-ish, four strikeouts, no earned runs, secures it down, Pirates get the shutout. So good job, bullpen. And, and also, like, in a sense, too, by Zach Thompson coming in the pitch, all two, like a nice day off for the bullpen. They, they earned that one. Yeah, I – um, I, yeah, I mean, when we talked about it last night. Last night on the post game, we said, I don't know if this team's going to win another game unless a starting pitcher goes seven innings. What happens today? Starting pitcher goes seven. Bullpen only <laughs> needs to get six outs, and they win. Yep. Good job, Jim. You called it. Yep. But we didn't know but, if they were going to win a game. But the offense came through, too. The pitching was there. Uh, and I guess maybe, maybe talk about the offense a little bit here also. Um, yeah, I mean, it seemed like Wade Miley had their number for the most part, really until that fifth inning. Miley threw a ball into the center, into center field. Um, got hurt. They bring in Alzale, you know, who's coming off of injury, he hasn't pitched much this year. Uh, and then, you know, they immediately start rocking Alzale there in the fifth. So, yeah, that's when they kind of busted the game open. It was one nothing going into that fifth inning, and then they drop a five spot thanks to basically Bay and Sawinski. Yes. Yes. So, and Bobby, our boy Bobby Fulton has a question. Would Sawinski be in the running for rookie of the year if he was up all year? 
Um, just to answer your question, I don't think so. I mean, I mean granted, if you were to take the counting numbers, right, he's still the home runs and all that, yeah. sure. But you see what those boys are doing in Atlanta? He doesn't have a chance. Yeah, there's two guys in Atlanta who are going to be battling out. Oh, this Strider just got put on the IL, so he's done for the year. So he's going to yep. finish the year at a 4.9 war, which is still pretty solid. Harris is sitting right there at 4.6. So, yeah, it's going to be one of those two. Yeah, I mean, Harris yeah. is clearly the better player yeah. as a hitter. And, and Strider also, Strider set a rookie record, the only rookie pitcher in MLB history to have 200 strikeouts and less than 100 hits. That's impressive. Sorry, yeah. Jack Sawinski. Yeah. I understand you hit yeah. your 18th home run today. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Jack Sawinski. Mm-hmm. He is 18 today. He loves PNC Park. Now, I think Sawinski, but, I even think Sawinski now probably has a shot at finishing like, like he'll get votes, like top eight or so, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'll just spitball in here. I haven't really, I haven't looked at this in a while. Let's see, National League rookies. Lars Newbar still technically a rookie. Brendan Donovan's a rookie. Newbar yeah, so went. yeah, deep last night. Yeah, so Swinski actually probably, but had he been up all year, top ten. I think, what you're saying, had he been up all year, yeah. probably definitely top 10 votes. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so yes, we talked about him last night. He had the home run with three walks. Today he had the big home run in a pinch with pinch hitting. Three runs, shot, very deep. I mean, like you said, Sawinski and Bay. Bay setting the work today as well. So he got another hit today, a double. Um, got his first two RBIs. He... I know it's just two games. Like, granted, I'm not – this is what G1 Bay is in two games. But, like, he has been impressive these two games. He's been all over the place. Like, in every facet of the game so far, he's left an impression. Yeah, and we mentioned it last night too. Like, this is this is what you're expecting him to do is kind of be a spark plug, somebody who can put the ball in play, good contact skills, uh, fast, you know, wreaks havoc on the bases, plays decent defense. And, and through two games, he's done exactly what, you know, we would expect to and hope to see out of him. So, I mean, that For double sure. today was was in a big spot. Uh, two-run double, his first two runs about at the end of the season. That 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 broke it open there in the fifth, right? That that scored the first two runs, and then uh, and then Swinski cleaned it up with his with his three-run homer. But yeah, good uh, good first impression so far. For uh, for Bay, for sure. You know he had the two stolen bases last night. We talked about his speed. He talked about like this, how he was feared on the base paths. And you're also seeing today the speed, how it's going to play into his like his slugging, his power. You know that mm-hmm. double came simply because he's just so fast. It wasn't like he just barreled that ball and just it wasn't like a no Cruz shot, right? No. It was a slap in right field, and then he runs 90 miles an hour and got the second base. So uh, you're going to see a lot from his power coming from the speed as you showed today too. But yeah, I mean, a good game defensively on the base pass, you know, hitting like all around so far. He's he's left that impression. So good game from from Bay. Um, Reynolds did go one for three today. Castro two for four. I mean, Castro going back alive. He had two hits today as well. Yeah. Um, one. One just short of the wall, but a nice double from him also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Castro, the, the WRC plus is up to one oh nine now for the year. And that's even including his first stint which was not good. Right. Uh, he's just been otherworldly since his call up. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? And I don't think you saw this one, a great defensive catch on okay. third base. I, yeah, there was I'd a pop that. up. Yeah. There was a shallow pop up. I mean, he had to run, chase it down in, um, I mean, between home and third. Right. But I mean, just saw the speed there defensively. I mean, how athletic he is. He made that out there. So a gr- really good defensive play that he made also. Um, so, yeah, good game from Rodolfo Castro as well. Yeah. Cool. cool. I think it's kind of crazy, cool, cool, Jack cool. Swinski, like, at home. So Jack Swinski, three-run homer. He homered last night. His home oh, – like, his home away splits are just absolutely absurd. He has a 956 OPS at home. And on the road, just, it's 
364 364 like That's and this crazy. isn't this isn't even like a small sample size like he's got 150 at bats on both ends and he's just he's like he's like Aaron Judge at home and then when he goes on the road he's Jason Delay if that I mean that's don't slight Jason Delay that hard man <laughs> I mean Jason Delay's not that awful <laughs> Like he's not even he's as much as we hated Josh uh, Van Meter. He's, worse than Jason, he's like Jason, half yeah. of Josh Van Meter. Yeah, he's like he's like half of a Van Meter on the road, and then at home he's like one of the best hitters in baseball. It's insane. I don't understand it. He's a DH designated home player. <laughs> no, designated home player. Yeah. What the what the Pirates need to do with their schedule is just they need to make it so that they're home for like. 15 days and they go on the road for 15 days so they can just send him up and down. I guess there's, there's limits now on how many times you can option people, but that would be the play. Just move them up and down every time you go home or away. Find that 15 game stretch that has a lot of weak teams. And that's, yeah. you know, then you have like a whole 45 days. So you yeah. can limit those options, right? Cause you right. know, he's in triple a and then Oh, I'm sorry. The, when he's up, never mind. Forget it. But anyways, that's how you do it. Like you find the stretches where you're away and it's weaker teams. It's maybe not that awful. But yeah, it, it's crazy. Like his splits, and he just like I feel like every time he's in PNC Park, he hits a home run. Yeah, I mean that was his 18th back -back home nights. run. That was his 18th home run of the year. 15th at home, <laughs> which is about right. Yeah, that's just crazy. Oh man, but hey, again. Pinch hit came in one for two from him. He did get the strikeout there. Strikeouts have been somewhat of a problem for him, continuing from the time he got sent back down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the offense was there. Only seven hits, but again, they capitalized, right? Six RBIs, eight strikeouts today. Um, so again, like, wasn't egregious. So we're used to the Pirates, like double digits. I mean, hell, they had, what, 22 just less than a week ago. Yeah. So but they had six yesterday, eight today, so 14 in two games. I mean, man, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, back-to-back -back games where they weren't really facing starters with, like, crazy good stuff either. You, you know, don't have to be the Debbie Downer. We know that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the offense has looked good this uh, these last two days. I mean, it's five runs yesterday, six runs today. Yep. Yeah. So again, really good game. Very impressed. So now this leaves us with eleven games. Is it remaining? Uh, yeah. No, ten. Ten. Oh yeah, because six and ninety-six. So we're one hundred fifty-two games. So we have ten games remaining. You have the Reds, and then you have back-to-back -back Cardinals. So it's a nice, it's nice to get a win today. Um, you, obviously tomorrow you get the Cubs again. Um, don't recall who is pitching. I can find out. Ortiz. Ortiz pitching tomorrow against uh, Adrian Sampson. Get to face him again this year. Yeah. Old Bucko. I forget what happened the first time they faced Sampson. Did he? I feel I'm like sure he mowed he... them down. Seven innings, two runs. Okay. Uh, that was his best start of the year. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which honestly, he's not. I mean, he has a three point three five ERA. So he's actually in case. He's actually yeah. pitching effectively. Yeah, he's pitched well. Just another team that turned our guys around. As he's like forty years old now. Yeah, but it's been a while. Anyways, so uh, yeah, one more against the Cubs. You have the Reds, which you hope maybe get some you know wins out of there. And I guess the relief is you don't have to worry about Pujols and his seven hundred. That's done. No, so, that's all done. I mean, unless you want to give up like 15 home runs to Pujols and then like he's chasing Babe Ruth at that point. He, I mean, he does finish. It, what I do want to say though, in that, and we'll talk more about obviously in that situation when time comes, but like he gets to finish his career in PNC Park. I like how much better of a, a send off is that for Albert Pujols? He won't well, have 700, the but those are very good. Well, yeah. Well, I'm talking also like you won't have 700, but there's a very good chance his last home run. Last home run that counts will probably be at PNC Park. Yeah. Right. So there's still something brewing there. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Anything else that you want to talk about today? It was a good game. 
I said it like 20 times. I, I'm kind of in shock. It was a good game. I think it was nice to like give the bullpen. You mentioned it before, like give the bullpen really an off day because Zach Thompson, I don't even know if he's a reliever or if he's a starter. They just kind of use him whenever they feel like it right now. Um, but it was nice to kind of give everybody a day off there. I'm sure that'll be well needed. Um, but, but no, I mean, just an, another good win. Uh, let's let's finish off this series. They can't. I mean, it's possible they can take – they can at least split this series with the Cubs now. Um, and then you got the Reds, and you got to hope that – yeah, you see good things there. I think uh, – let's see. I mean, you got Rowan. You got, you got Contreras, and you got Keller going against the Reds. So you got to hope you win two of those at least. But, yep. yeah, Luis Ortiz tomorrow, day game. Steelers don't play, so you know you don't have to worry about a Steelers game coinciding with the Pirates game. And uh, I mean, two really, really impressive starts so far from Ortiz. So let's see if he can string together another one. There you go. Very excited about that. I mean, again, there's only 10, 11 games, ten games, whatever. Um, but there's still some reasons to to watch still. Uh, as it stands right now, fifty six, ninety six, like we're. We're heading to seeing a hundred loss season, right? I mean, that's understandable. Six games I, left against the Cardinals, yeah. So, but I guess four, if we can, you know, watch them squeak out four more wins, at, at least they break sixty. Can we have that as a concession? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have at least four more wins for sixty, um, yeah. and four more at least positive, fun post game shows for us. Yes. So let's hope for that. All right. I'm down. With that said, then let's get out of here. We will see you tomorrow uh, after the game. The game is a, what time was it? 135. So, mm-hmm. oh, another thing too, this game was fast as hell. I mean, it is what? 930. And we're wrapping up the post game show now. That so, is true. So shout I'm, out. I'm that's what happens when, I mean, Oviedo had a lot to do with that. Um, 82 pitches in his seven innings, but also, to keep in mind, that fifth inning was pretty long because of that Miley injury. So, Alzale came in and warmed up for like 10 minutes. Right. Yeah, very, very fast ball game. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I know. It's it's same, I got to hit up Tyler. Maybe get some NHL in right now. So, yeah, he's, he, we got a night on. left. Football's on. Yeah, whatever. Ohio State's playing. Well, anyways, let's get out of here. Appreciate everyone for watching. Thanks for everything. We will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you guys.